Hi, this is Brandon Schlatter, and this is my presentation on the hashtag fraud. So this is something I think everyone should see when they type in the hashtag fraud somewhere, and this is the fraud triangle. Basically, this is composed of three elements, opportunity, rationalization, and pressure. And these are the three components that usually go into fraud. Opportunity being that they are able to commit the fraud. Perhaps they are the only one that counts a deposit or something like that and could easily take something off the top. Rationalization gives themselves the belief that anyone would do it or that they deserve it, perhaps. Pressure is anything that would force them to do this. This could be financial struggles at home or possibly if they're high up and they need to make some sort of quota in order to keep their job, anything along those lines. And these are common reasons for small business fraud. They have no separation of duties. As I mentioned previously with the opportunity section of the fraud triangle, small businesses often don't have two sets of eyes that can count deposits or another department to double check something just to make sure nothing suspicious is going on. Another reason is lack of audits. And usually that's because audits are expensive to do. And usually only if there's a huge positive benefit will a company go ahead and do an audit if they're small. But that usually does help uncover fraud because they do deep analysis of statistics and just look at it from a different perspective than you might. And then the last reason is low employee morale or the poor training and hiring process. And basically with this, you know, if you have a small company and your boss is kind of a shady guy, you might kind of follow in his footsteps or be like, this is okay to do because my boss did it. Or perhaps they just have a poor hiring and training process and don't look at people's past history, call their references, just simple stuff that anyone would do. And on the right here, we have a picture of a mischievous worker, and he's obviously stealing money from the company. And you might only think this could happen in small businesses, but that's not true. It does happen in corporations as well. Um, this is someone you might be familiar with. Uh, this is Barbara Corseron, uh, better known as the Shark Tank judge. Basically, what happened to her is her assistant had paid a fraudulent invoice. It came from the person it usually comes from. However, the email was one letter off of the actual email. Other than that, the email looked regular. The PDF attached to it was an invoice that looked proper as well. So she went ahead and paid it. Luckily, in this case, she was able to recover her money back. I believe it was a sum of $400,000. So luckily for her, but in a lot of situations, you wouldn't be able to get this money back. And these are good things that I think would come up if you typed in hashtag fraud.